Hello, my name is Sara Inés Calderón. And I'm Adriana Maestes. And this is uh, your immigration political roundup for Latino politics this week. So this week, um, as I'm sure everyone you know who's watching has been seeing, there's been all kinds of contentious discussions about immigration legislation that we don't even have yet. So we're going to kind of go over the finer points of that. But first, I wanted to invite you to please subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it, leave us your, your comments, and definitely follow us on Twitter. I'm Sada Chica D. I'm Latino Politics. And hopefully we'll see you on Twitter, we'll see your comments, and we'll be able to kind of communicate via this medium. So interesting thing that's happening is that there seems to be some kind of fissures happening ideologically in the House of Representatives between Republicans. So we have this really conservative uh, gentleman named Eric Cantor, who is what, the majority whip, right? I think so. Yeah. So he's been From kind Virginia. of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from Virginia. So he's been this really conservative voice, and then he came out recently and said that, hey, maybe there should be a pathway to citizenship. And that came right on the heels of this guy, kind of gang of eight bipartisan uh, uh, unveiling of immigration reform principles that included conservative senators like John McCain and so then, and Marco Rubio, obviously. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. Um, but, you know, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and Marco Rubio, this is not their first immigration reform rodeo, right? So, um, or at least in uh, Rubio's case, you know, who's always talking about the Dream Act too last year. So we have these kind of quote unquote pro immigration reform GOPers kind of raising the flag of, hey, let's do something with immigration reform. And John McCain came out and said, quite frankly, it's because they lost a Latino vote. So fine, they're trying to do that. But at the same time, you have these really anti-amnesty, anti-citizenship, you know, amnesty and citizenship are like bad words in the in the minds of these folks. So what you end up have happening is something that you wrote about, Adriana. You have people like Raul Labrador um, who are just kind of blatantly saying, hey, there's no way any legislation that has a pathway to citizenship is going to pass the House. Exactly. So that's splitting up in the GOP ideological uh, court. You know, want to tell us a little bit more about that? He said that a few days. He said that a few days ago, and that was, I want to say he said it um, the day after the House Judiciary Committee held their immigration That's reform right. hearing this last week. Um, so basically, he he just said what you said. He he doesn't think that a pathway to citizenship would pass the House, and that if it doesn't pass the House and immigration reform doesn't go anywhere, that the Democrats are going to use this issue to beat, he, he said something to the effect of, to beat the Republicans over the head with in the next election, which is probably true because we keep on hearing... Um, the more left-leaning democratic um, organizations and spokespeople keep on talking about a pathway to citizenship and that must be an essential component of any sort of immigration reform. President Obama has said that himself. Um, so if there, if there is no pathway to citizenship, what they are kind of pre proposing is that there is a um, a legal residency that these people would be able to have, which means they would be able to live and work here in the United States. They would be, um, they just would not be allowed to vote. So a lot, some people are calling this a certain second class status. But I think that what's really interesting is there seems to be some people who, um, even like a Latina columnist, Esther Cepeda, wrote an article. Um, just yesterday that was published on NBC Latino suggesting that citizenship doesn't really have to be the end game. Um, and she cited a statistic from the Pew Hispanic Center that said the, oh, it was a large percentage of legal Mexican immigrants had not opted to apply for citizenship. So I think for me this kind of makes me wonder, do these people, um, maybe they harbor some sort of longing to go back to the country where they originated from, um, or perhaps they feel that maybe for whatever reason the United States has wronged them and they do not want to become citizens of here of of, of, of this country, or or maybe like it's just not important to them, which is something that I kind of wonder. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think the hard part here is that we're all kind of talking in circles of. Uh, poten potential things that could or could not make it into legislation because we don't have any legislation right now. 
-hmm. it's all hypothetical it's all like an outline it's all principles it's all these fancy things we want to call it because we don't have any kind of like tangible reality of this is what our comprehensive Im immigration reform is going to look like so I think while we're talking about hey is there going to be a pathway to citizenship is there going to be like a new kind of like you know tier of legal residents that can't become citizens and we're talking about all of these potential things but the thing that I kind of see as one of the more certain things that we have seen and we've seen lots of is this enforcement stuff that we keep talking about so securing the border which is a story uh, I wrote recently kind of talking to uh, different folks I talked to a congressman's office who has a uh, district along the border. I talked to a borderlands uh, historian and what we see is that this you know the same kind of stuff is just the same way that like amnesty and like citizenship are kind of like these scary words so it was like securing the border we've been talking about securing the border for a long time in the United States and quite frankly the bar of what secure border means keeps moving and keeps shifting depending on who you're talking to or what you're talking about and so I think the unfortunate thing is like because we don't have anything specific to talk about we just keep talking about all of these like vague ideas of what is gonna make us feel like we're gonna move towards reform when the actuality is what we're really stuck on is we're stuck on the same stuff we've been stuck on with immigration reform in the past you know this secure border stuff and this amnesty stuff and so I think that those are gonna be the two main hurdles we're gonna have to get over once we really start looking into composing legislation that's going to address our immigration situation well the other thing about the whole pathway to citizenship is if um, if the stat that she cited is correct, and in a way I don't have reason to doubt it, um, she said where it came from, it came from the Pew Hispanic Center, and this was a percentage of legal Mexican immigrants who were opting not to apply for citizenship even though they were eligible, it makes me wonder then, I mean, why is this really even a point? So if a lot of them are not applying for it, then maybe there really should be no threat in offering it? Yeah, well, and I mean, I think <laughs> the thing that popped into my head when you said that is it's like, so they can't vote. I mean, it just seems like such a blatant grab on the GOP's part. It's like, hey, if we can't get Latino voters, let's make sure that they can't vote for Democrats either, you know? And I think this goes back to what you were saying about Raul Labrador, where we're really talking about here is we're talking about, you were talking about 2014, 2014 cycle. Yeah. We're talking about who's going to get to use immigration to their home field advantage in the next congressional election. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is like I, in my, in my view, people who really, and I think you see this too, people who study the issue and pay attention, know that um, I, I think n neither side really has the moral upper ground, uh, um, upper hand on this. And so, you know, you kind of have the Democrats who talk about pathway to citizenship. They talk about wanting immigration reform, um, but yet, you know, they have uh, in 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 the Democratic leadership in the president in in President Obama, you have somebody who's deported more people, <laughs> more people in history. Yeah. yeah. So um, that to me is kind of like the ironic thing is that I that sort of message about the deportations maybe maybe it doesn't reach the masses or it doesn't reach it doesn't rise to sort of the level of alarm that it should. Mm -hmm. or, or perhaps some voters just sort of think, well, you know, I'm a voter, I'm a citizen now, I really don't have to care, <laughs> I don't have to worry about being deported. That, that could be what goes through some people's mind, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a, that's kind of going back to what we've been talking about. Is there's a lot of things we don't know, and we're not going to know until we see a piece of legislation, and we're able to look at that piece of legislation, and we're able to analyze what's in it. So, but um, we'll see. That'll probably be in the next few weeks. We'll see what happens. Exactly. We'll we'll get our hands on that bill. Yeah, that's I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, don't forget to leave us your comments, subscribe, share this video, tweet us. I'm Sara Chica D. I'm Latino Politics. And uh, well, hopefully we'll see you here again next week. Bye. Bye.